go. All right, good evening. Today we're starting uh, Parakamafkid. So we're halfway down on Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis. And uh, in Yerch Hashem, we're going to get to the very top of Lamed Hey, Lamed Aleph. We're going to end. The stopping point is actually after a question and before an answer. So, I don't know. Yes. Cliffhanger, keep them guessing. You know. Yeah, you could think about it. Uh, this parak it, it will speak in great deal about the Arba Shomer, the Shomer, the Shomer, the Shomer Chinam, the Shomer Sachar, the uh, Socher and the Poel. Um, and today, this first Mishnah, we'll see that it's primarily talking about a Shomer Chinam. Let's jump right in, halfway down, Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis. Amavkit Eitzel Chavero, Behema O Kalim. Let's say that I'm holding on to something for you, either a Behema or a Kalim. The Gemara is bothered already by why we have both Behema and Kalim. We'll analyze the Nignavo Osha Abdo, and it was stolen or it was lost. So then the Shomer Chinam has a choice to make. He can either pay or he can make a Shvua. So it says the Gemara, we're going to discuss both iterations. If Shilem Velo Rotsali Shava, he says, look, the item that I was watching was worth $20. Here is a $20 bill. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to make a Shvua. So then uh, he's allowed to do that. How do we know that he's allowed to be Shilem Velo Rotsali Shava, that he can skirt the Shavuah. P.S. What Shavuah is he making? Rashi, at the open of the parak, eight lines from the bottom of the page, says, shomrim. So let's get the language down. What is Shavuah Shomrim? Because we have another Shavuah that's going to come up later today. Shavuah Shomrim, Rashi says, Shalom Pashaba v'shalom shalach boya. I did not do anything intentionally wrong to this item, uh, and I don't, uh, and, I, and I didn't touch it, right? Meaning I didn't do anything wrong with it. And Rashi says, How do we know? Let's go back in the Gemara. He could have patered himself. So when he pays, he doesn't have to make the Shavuah. He could have patered himself. Because if a Shomer Chinam wants to escape paying, all he has to do is make the Shavuah Shomer. Of course, it has to be true. Otherwise, he's violating other halachos. But the point over here is that he is able to get out of it. And therefore, he can pay for it. No problem at all. So now let's deal with, with this case. If in fact, on the Shomer Chinam, you come to claim your item and I say, look, I, I, don't, I have no idea where it is. It was stolen, it was lost, but I don't even want to go to Besdin. Here's $20, so then what? If at that point, Nimsa Haganav, if at that point we find the thief and we find the item, well, uh, then of course, Mishalim Tashlum Kefel. Obviously the Ganav has to pay Kefel. And if Tavachu Machar, if the Ganav shechted or sold my item, well, your item, then Mishalim Tashlum Arba Chamisha. And the Mishnah wants to know who does the money go to. On the one hand, I pay, I as the Shomer paid you back, right? You gave me an item, it was lost or stolen. I didn't want to make a Shvua, so I just paid you. But now that there's an incoming Kefel or Dalit Behe, who's paying for it? Who, who gets to keep that money, I should say? So it says the Gemara, the Mi Shaha Pikadon This goes to the person who now owns the Pikadon, Rashi. That since I dropped the $20 bill on the item that I was watching for you, I am effectively the owner of that lost item. So I invested. Because what, what ended up happening? I paid 20, but Kefel is 40. Dalad Vehe is a lot more, right? Dalad Vehe is 80 or 100. So really, it was an investment of sorts. So let's review. Case number one in the Mishnah is if I am watching something of yours and it gets lost or stolen, and I pay to, I pay for your losses. You gave me 20 to watch and I paid you back with a $20 bill. Then any further revenues that come about from that lost item, if we find the Ghana of whatever, all of those monies come to me. However, and this is part two of our Mishnah, let's say in our case, I decide I'm not going to give you a 20, but rather nishba velo ratza v'shalem. I'm going to make the shvua shomrim, which as Rashi mentioned was shalom pasha bo, the shalom shalach bo yad. I make a shvua, and as we pointed out already on the third line of the Mishnah that we have from the Chachamim, that shomer chinam is nishba v'yotze. So let's say that I didn't pay anything but made a shvua. Then, nim sa gana m'shalom tashlumi kefil, tavach umach m'shalom tashlumi arba v'hei, l'mi m'shalom m'bala pikadam. So then it goes to the person who who actually owns the item. And that's not the Shomer Chinam in this case. The Shomer Chinam denied that he did anything wrong. Shari Amru Shomer Chinam Nishba So he did not pay. So the safe is crystal clear. And the race is crystal clear. 
if I'm the Shomer, if I pay instead of making a Shavua, then if there's any subsequent revenues from the Kefel or from the Dal Behe, it's mine. And if I don't make a Shavua, uh, if, and if I do make a Shavua, then you get to keep the, those extra monies. Very clean. The Gemara opens up three-fourths of the way down, ten lines into the new parak, and asks a simple question. In our Mishnah, what was the Mishnah trying to teach us by having two different types of items that could have been entrusted to you? One is an animal and one is Kalim. Says the Gemara Tzriche. We needed both. If the Mishnah had only spoken about a case of Behema, that perhaps only a Behema is something that the Shomer would have kept because he paid the $20 because in order for the Shomer Chinam to watch the animal, he had to work very hard. But for inanimate objects that just sit there, all you got to do is stick it in the attic, stick it in the garage, and Shalom Yisrael, it's easy peasy. So Ema, lo makne lek fela. So then maybe we would have said that he would not have given over Kethel, therefore we needed the case of Kalim. And be'itana Kalim, if I only would have had the case of Kalim, Maybe only by Kalim would Kefel go to the Shomer. Because back in the day, at least, the devices there, the, the metatalin that you were watching, were, were not so valuable. And therefore, it wasn't such a loss for the owner. I might have thought that because an animal could really turn into four times the principal, or even five times, times the principal. So maybe the Bailam, maybe the Mishnah would not have awarded the Shomer with the Kefil or the Dalab. Hey, Tzricha, we therefore need both. So that explains, says the, the Gemara, why our Mishnah needed the language of Behema and the language of Kalim. But the Gemara is bothered. Let's remember our flow of events. You lend me something, you ask me to watch something on January 1st. You come back on January 10th and say, Phil, where's my $20 item? I say, I don't know. Here's $20. So the problem is that when we find the gun of 10 days later, what I paid for on January 10th was the cost of your item at $20. But when they catch the guy and he has to pay KFIL, he's paying $40. But I was Kona something that never even happened yet. I was Kona the KFIL, which may never have happened in the future. We don't know if we're ever going to find the gun. So it says the Gemara, Maskif la Romi bar Chama. How can you say that the Shomer will get anything in our Mishnah? You're not able to acquire something that hasn't happened yet. A shita that we've seen a good dozen times in Shas. Even Rav Meir who holds that you can, yes, affirmative, acquire something that doesn't exist yet, last line of Lamed Gimel Lamed Beis, Hani Mili Kikon Pero Zekel Da'avidi Da'asu, that's when it talks about things that are basically automatic. Roots of a tree are going to grow. Aval hacha, but in our case of our Mishnah, where the Shomer paid the $20, not knowing if we would ever catch the Ganav or if we would ever pay Kefil, mi yemar demignava, who says the item was in fact stolen. And even so, the intim salomar demignava, turning to the top of la medalit, even if you want to say that it's going to be stolen, mi yemar demishtakach ganav. Who says that we're ever going to find the Ganem? And even if we find the Ganem, maybe if we find the Ganem and he has the item, maybe he'll be Moda because we know that Moda Beknas is Pater and Kefel, as we've discussed earlier in Shas, is a Knas. So you, even Rav Meir, who believes in Dabr Shalom Bala Obla, that you can be Makna Dabr Shalom Bala Ola, even Rav Meir would say in a case like this, there's too many unknowns. There's too many unknowns. So because of that, how can the ratio of our Mishnah say that I, the Shomer, who paid the $20 so that I won't have to make a Shavua, how could it be that when I pay the money on January 10th to own the rights to your item that I was watching, how can I then earn the rights to Kefal 10 days later? Hare is Dabr Shalom Bala Olam. So here we'll see two, uh, two answers, and one of the answers has two versions. So Amar Rabbah, here's answer number one of Rabbah. We'll see another one in a few lines. Amar Rava, it's built into the contract. Nase ke omerlo. It's as if the uh, the mafkid said to the to the shomer. It's as if he said lichashati ganev. If in fact it's ever stolen, v'tirtze uti shalameni, and you choose to pay me, hare parasi knu yalach me'achshav. It's retroactive, and what that means is that 
really be'etem, the uh, owner of the actual item, when he gave it to the Shomer, said, if there is, in the event that there is a day like this where the item is stolen, it's kenu yalach me'achshav, it's all yours. Maskif la Rava, I don't like your answer. Ihachi, if that's true, afilu gizo seha vivlado seha. If that's true, then it's kenu yalach me'achshav, right? So that means that from January 10th, when I made my $20 payment, I earned the rights to kefal from, from down the road. And let's say during the 10 days between the time I paid the $20 and the time we found the Ghana, let's say that the animal gave birth or that I cut the wool off of the animal. Rava, if you're right, that there's a retroactive agreed upon Kenyan from the time that the Shomer drops the $20, then it should be that the Shomer also gets to keep the Gizoseh, the shearings and the Vladoseh, the children that are born during that time. But that's not the case. So therefore, Reb Zera gives another answer. He says that too is built into the original retroactive contract. So instead of the contract being that if you, the Shomer, choose to pay the $20, you get to keep uh, you get to keep the kefil and the dalad v'hei. Now we're saying that they built in, but not the, the gizoseh and the vladoseh. And that does function as a reasonable answer. Says the Gemara, Umay Pasca, is this really the standard? So says the Gemara, yes, Stama de Milsa, Shvacha de Asa me Alma, Avidinish de Makne. It is normal for a person to give over the Shvach, the, the extras, the gain, um, when it is uh, in a case of Makne. But Shvacha de Migufa, Lo Avidinish de Makne. But he would not give that over if it's Shvacha de Migufa. So that means these things are part of the animal as opposed to external things. And therefore, because they're part of the animal, he is not as quick to allow the Shomer to be Kona. In short, these two answers teach us that the reason why in our Mishnah we allow for the Shomer to keep the Kefel, even though he paid for the, the cost of the item many days earlier, is because we had a precondition that when the Baal Pikadon handed it over to the Shomer, it was agreed upon. Now, we learned Rava's first answer, and the Gemara is now going to provide a second answer for Rava. We're 10, 12 lines down on Lamadal and Lamadal. Yikate Amre, there are those who say that there's another version of Rava. Amar Rava, Na A little bit of a knech, that yes, it's true that it's built in, but whereas Rava number one, three lines down and four lines down, said that there's a retroactive Kenyan to the Shomer from the moment he pays, here we're saying something a little different. There's a retroactive Kenyan to the moment just before the item was stolen. And therefore, my Benayu, the difference between them is two things. Ike Benayu Kusha de Rabzeira. Rabzeira's question doesn't apply over here because over here we say that the Shomer only acquired the item the moment before it was stolen. And therefore, no shearings were done at that time and no births of an animals were happened at that time. And that solves problem number one. Inami, there's another uh, case scenario that this would solve, which is the Kaim of Be'agam. If the animal wasn't currently located here, where the animal's not located here, then they would also agree that uh, uh, at least one version of Rava would agree that that Kenyan wouldn't count because the animal is not there. So that ends uh, Sugya number one in this parak of Parak HaMafkid, a very well-known parak. Let's jump into Sugya number two. We had said in the third line, on the second line of our mission at the open of the parak, that the Shomer has the, the right to just pay and avoid a Shvua. So the Gemara wants to know, does he actually have to pay? Or does he just have to say, I'm willing to pay? Does he need the dollars to transfer hands? Or can he just say, I'm willing to pay? Well, the, within the two dots here, the Gemara says, and says the Gemara as follows, You don't actually have to pay. Once you say, I'm willing to pay, so then if the Ghanav is caught at that point, then you're still allowed to collect the kefal. You obviously still have to pay what you committed to pay. Let's say it's $20. You have to pay the 20 That's for sure. But you are you still earn the rights to the kefal on the dollar behe. Says the Gemara, wait one second. A third of the way down. It's none. What about our Mishnah? Shilein velo ratzali shaba. That's the language of our Mishnah on the second line of this parak. Says the Gemara, shilein in if you pay. It doesn't say if you conceptually pay, if you agreed to pay, if you said harani mishalim, shilem in, lo shilem lo. So why are you saying, Rav Yochanan, why are you saying that lo shilem shilem mamish? 
it should be that it is Shilei Mamash, that you should only be able to earn the rights of the Kefal and the Dalad Behe as a Shomer if you have actually paid the $20 for the item that you were watching. So says the Gemara, that's not a good argument because Ema Seifa, the end of our Mishnah, leaves room for an implication that is the opposite of this first inference. What does the end of our Mishnah say? We have the language at the end of our Mishnah, the second half of our Mishnah, where we had said that the Shomer decided to make the Shua Shomer. And again, as mentioned, the Shua Shomer, if he decides to make that Shua, so if that's because lo ratza l'shalim and the diuk is time of lo ratza. But ha ratza, if he did want to pay, it implies afal pisha lo shilin, which means that the reisha and the seifa have opposite implications about whether or not the ratza to pay is the same as actual payment. Ella, it must therefore be meha leka the mishma mina. It must be that our mishnah is not trying to teach us anything about the case of hareini mishalim. We just don't know. It's not that we know when we're saying it's us, or we don't know. We don't know if it's just a uh, a verbal commitment to pay or if you actually have to pay. All right, says the Gemara, well, all right, I hear your argument, but I actually do have a support for this sheet of Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan at the open of this Gemara had said that you can just say Hareini Mishalim. And Tanya Kavasi the Rav Yochanan, because the Brisa says as follows, Hasocher para mechavero v'nignava. Let's say that I rent a cow from you and then it gets stolen from me. I am going to make a, uh, I'm going to be willing to pay. It doesn't say he paid. I'm willing to pay, but I don't want to make a shvua. And then, what does it say? Black on white. So the one who said, oh, so we see from here that Rabbi Yochanan has a raya. Our Mishnah said the word Shilin. Rav Yochanan said it's not Shilin, Mamish, it's really Hareni Mishalim. And the Bryce over here by the Socher brings a beautiful Raya. And that's how the Gemara seems to conclude. Again, we're not poskim, but had we been poskim and had we been paskining from the Gemara alone without Rishonim, we would have concluded that if I as a Shomer say Hareni Mishalim, that alone earns me the rights to any future Kefel or Dalad Behe. Next, different iterations of Shomer Chinam. Mm-hmm. Amar of Papa. In the case of Shomer Chinam, Kevan Shomer Pashat, once he said, I was negligent, then Makna like Fela. By saying he's negligent, he obligates himself to pay for that which he was neg- negligent with, which is your item. And in turn, he's also Makna like Fela. That's enough to earn him Ketel. The Ibai, because we have a little bit of a Migu, if he wanted Patar Nashe with a claim of Vigneva. He could have argued, because he's a low-level Shomer Chinam, we know that they're, they're Pater from Gneva and Aveda. Why wouldn't he have just said Gneva? Elamaya must be that he really was Poshea, and therefore he has to pay the principal of $20 for the Pshia, but he gets 40 from the Kefel. All of that is on the level of a Shomer Chinam. A Shomer Sachar, and we're halfway down on Lama Dal and Madalit. A Shomer Sachar, Kevan Sha'amar and Megneva, Makna Lekfeva. By a Shomer Sachar, the moment he says it was stolen... So then he's makna like fela because the ibai he was mechay of himself. The claim of gneva only exempts a shomer china, but not a shomer sacha. And therefore, once he says nigneva the shomer sacha, and he obligates himself in the cost of the item, so then uh, he earns the rights to kefel. The ibai, if he wanted to, patar nafshe b'shvur of emesa, he could have said that the item that I was watching or the animal that I was watching died of natural causes. Right? Sometimes. We have this happen. Sometimes you have a toaster oven and just goes kaput and stops working. So if that happens while you're a Shomer Sachar, you're completely putter. In this case, the Shomer Sachar didn't argue that. He didn't argue Shvur of Emesa. He argued Nignava, which means he's admitting his responsibility and his guilt. So therefore, he has to pay. Therefore, he earn the, earns the right to Kefel. Now we're going to learn about a Shoel, but I'll just tell you now there's two versions of this piece of Gemara about the Shoel part. Shoel Shomer Hareni Mishalim, if you have a Shoel who says, I'll just pay. Lo makna lekfela. Here we deviate. The Shoah will not uh, be able to get future Ketel. Why? Because what would have been the only way for a Shomer, for a uh, Shoel to patter himself? Only if the animal died of natural causes. But, and therefore, a Shoah who says, he does not get the right to future Ketel. 
But Ika de Amre, that Amar of Papa, maybe things are a little bit different with a Shoal. Shoal Nami cave on Shoal Mahareni Mishalim Makna Lake Fela. Unlike version number one of the Shoal, here we see within Rav Papa in version number two, same author, just another version of Rav Papa, that if he says Hareni Mishalim, he does earn the rights to Kefel. That he always can claim that it's Mesa Mach Mas Malacha. And even though it's not so common for Mesa Mach Mas Malacha to happen, but it's still enough of a claim to exempt him. And therefore, because he could have had a better claim, but instead he said Hareni Mishalim. So when he says the words Hareni Mishalim as a Shoel, he earns the rights to Kefel. Says the Gemara, I hear you, Rav Papa, but we have a bit of a problem. We're three fourths of the way down. Amr Rav Zvid, Hachi Amr Abaye, Shoel. Ad Abaye pushes back on the uh, second version of the case of Rav Papa. Rav Papa version number two had said that really at the end of the day, the Gemara says, that at the end of the day in version number two of Rav Papa, that when the Shoal says, Hareni Mishalim, that's sufficient. But Abaye says, no, Hareni Mishalim is insufficient. And it's really Shoal Ad Shishalim. My taima, why does Abaye hold that a show has to actually pay? Because hold the chol shalo, because unlike the other types of shomrim, where the show has absolutely full rights to the item, full usage of the rights, therefore, bidibura lo makna lekfeva, words are not enough for him to make an acquisition. He's basically like an owner, and the words of Hareni Mishalim are, are insufficient. And Tanya Kavase de Zvid, we have a, a statement in a brisa like Rav Zvid, that when you are a shoel, you actually have to pay in order to earn the right to the kefel. Let's see what the Brysa says, 15 lines from the bottom of the page. If I borrow a cow from my friend, the nignava, and it was stolen. And then look at this language. And then the shoel came forward and paid. Then the shoel does earn the rights to the kefel. But here in this brisa, we had a very unique language of the key dame hashol v'shilein. What does that sound like? It sounds like he stepped up and paid. That's what it sounds like. No hareni mishalim language. It's pretty strong language. So says the Gemara. Lilishna kama de Rav Papa. The first version about a shoel that Rav Papa spoke about, where he said that a hareni mishalim does not work. Vadai lo yufta because that actually makes perfect sense with this brisa. Version number one of Rav Papa said you have to actually pay. And the brisa of Rav Zvid says you have to actually pay. But Lilishna Basra, but according to the second version of Rav Papa, where Hareni Mishalim is Makne Lake Fela, so then, Lema Tehave Tiyufta. Maybe we should assume that that does knock out version number two of Rav Papa. So Amr Lach Rav Papa, what would he say? No. Mi alima mi nisen. The language of Vikidem is not such mechudash language. It's no different than our Mishnah. Our Mishnah was the Katani Shilem. Our Mishnah on the third, fourth line said, uh, on the second line of our Mishnah said, Shilem v'lorotza lishava. How did we touch that word? We said, v'ukim no v'omar. Hachanami v'omar. Maybe we should say that in the Bryce of Rav Zvid, that it's also the case that it's v'omar. Says the Gemara, mi dami. Our Mishnah, where it says Shilem, and the Brysa of Rav Zvid, where it says, the Kidim Hashol Vashilim are not the same. Hasam in our Mishnah, Loka Tani Kidim. But Hachak Tani Kidim. The language in the Brysa of Rav Zvid is way more expressive and clear than the language of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah just says Shilim. The Brysa of Rav Zvid says, Kidim Hashol Vashilim. So therefore, maybe we should assume those languages are different. Says the Gemara, not necessarily my Kidim, Kidim V'Amar. Maybe it just means he uh, he was aggressive about saying he was going to pay. Says the Gemara, that, wait one second. However, by Socher it said the word Amar, and by Shoel it says the word Kidim. That implies that Kidim does not mean Amar. It sounds like even within the statement of Rav Papa, that the language of Socher, and Sho even within the Bryce of Rav Zvid, excuse me, that the language of uh, Socher is different. The language of Kidim is different than Omar. Says the Gemara, not necessarily. Who says that these brisas were taught at the same exact time? Perhaps the brisas were not taught in one sitting, and therefore the distinction between uh, Kidim and Shilim is insignificant. Says the Gemara, So they brought the question to the Talmidim of Rabbi Huda Hanasi. 
our Mishnah over here on Lamed Gimel Lamed Beis, and the Brice of Rav Zvit on the bottom of Lamed Dal, Lamed Aleph, were taught at the same time. And therefore, the language of Kidem is Dafka. And therefore, the Brisa of Rav Zvit is Akasha on version number two of Rav Papa. We are two lines from the bottom of Lamed Dal, Lamed Aleph. Says the Gemara, Pshita, the following is obvious. If the Shomer Abba said as follows, Amar any Mishalim, let's just go back to our Mishnah. In our Mishnah, he was he was clear and just said Shilin. But let's say he said uh, any Mishalim, and then Vachazar Amar, and then he changed his mind and said Hareni Mishalim. Says the Gemara, all good. He still earns the rights to Kefel because Haka Amar Hareni Mishalim. But what if it was the reverse? Ela Amar Hareni Mishalim. If his first comment was, I'm willing to pay, as we turn to the top of Lamed Dalad Amidbez, the Chazar ve'amar eni mishalim. My, let's say he reversed his language. He started out by saying, "I'm willing to pay," and then he changed his mind. Mi amrinan mehader kohadar be that he changed his mind and really, deep down, deep in his soul, he's not willing to pay. O Dilma, the only reason he changed to eno mishalim is the milse kai v'dechu yehu de kamarchi. They really, his original words were held in place. That's what the milse kai means. His words stand. And the second comment of any Mishalim was just to kick the can down the road to not actually make his payment today. So we don't know the answer to this or any of the next 10 questions. They're all going to end in a teku. Here's another question. Amar Hareni Mishalim Umez. Let's say that Ruvain said Hareni Mishalim. He was the Shomer. And he said, I'm willing to pay. And then he dies. And then the Yorshim, his children said, we are not willing to pay for this particular case of Shmira. My, how do we look at that? Do we say that the children are being mahader, they're changing what their father originally wanted? Or perhaps, really, they do agree to their father, who said, that really they're just kicking the can down the road, they don't want to pay the bill now. This also we don't know the answer to. What about Shilmu Banim? What if the sons of the Shomer Hey, would they then earn the rights to the kefil? Mati Amar le ki aknoi kefilo le avuchon de avadli naich de avadli naich nafshoi, but le ditchulo. Maybe the guy who owned the item originally will say to the sons of the shomer, "Yo, your father and I were friends, and I would be more than happy to give him kefil, but he died. No way am I giving you kefil." That we don't know. Shilaim lebanim. Let's say that money was paid to the sons uh, of the of the Shomer. So then, what would we say? I only did it for him. And then another Shiloh, what if the children of the Shomer paid to the children of the Baal Pikadon? What if What if only half of the money was paid to the uh, Shomer? Sha'al stay Peros, if I paros, if I borrow two paros with Shilem Echam and Mai, and I only paid back one, what would the halacha be there? Sha'am mina shutfin, if I borrowed from Shutfin with Shilem Echam and Mai, what and I only gave back to some of the Shutfin, what would the din be? And last a couple of questions. Three left, I think. Shutfin Shashalu Vishilem. Partners borrowed and paid back Echad man, only one, and only one paid back Mai. Or Sha'al mina Isha Vishilem Labaila. I borrowed from a woman and paid her husband back, what would the din be? Or Last but not least, Isha Shesha Allah Vishilin Baila, a woman borrows and a husband paid back my. In all of these cases, and there's a dozen of them, and all of them require Iyun and Rishonim and thinking and time to process. We have none of those things. So says the Gemara, Teku. In all of these cases, we do not know. That brings us to a new din. When our parak opened, we were talking about whether or not a person wanted to be Mishalim as a Shomer or if he wanted to make a Shvua. The Shvu at the time that we were discussing was the Shvuas Shomrim, which the first Rashi in the Perak indicates is Shelo Pashaba, Velo Sholach Bayad. Now the Gemara adds in another one. We're just about two thirds of the way down. Amar of Huna, Mashbian Oso, Shvua She'ena Birshuso. That even in a case where I, the Shomer, paid the $20, while I don't have to make a Shvua Shomrim, I do have to make the Shvua She'ena Birshuso, that the item is not in my property. My time, what's the concern? A practical concern. Perhaps I, as the Shomer, really liked your item. And what I'd like to do is pay you for the base price. Just pay you for it and keep it, even though it's not your desire. 
Now, in the end of the day, it really is dollar for dollar even. Let's talk about a case scenario where you gave me an expensive watch. The watch is $1,000 and I am watching it as a showmare. And uh, I claim that it's lost or stolen. And I say, I'm paying you for the watch. I fell in love with the watch. So you really have the equivalent of what I took from you, but I still stole from you. I'm still a thief because I forced the sale. That's not allowed. So says the Gemara, that's what we're concerned about. The Gemara now asks a question. We are in the middle of Lamedal and Abayz. We're going to learn a complex brisa. Ask a question at the top of Lamed Hey, Amid Aleph, on this din of Ravuna, and then we're going to stop right after the question. Let's just review one thing and then we'll continue, which is that the Shavua of Ravuna is a Shavua She'ena Birshuso. That even if I, as a Shomer, say, here's your $1,000 for the watch, sorry, I still need to make a Shavua She'ena Birshuso to make sure that I didn't have a Yetzirah to keep it. <clears throat> Says the Gemara Mesbe. Many cases over here, each one is difficult. Says the Gemara Sfalos. Hamalves Chavero Al Hamashkon. I lent you money based on collateral. And then ve'ovad hamashkon, then the collateral got lost. The Omar, and in these first two cases, the lender, the Malva says, Sela hil visicha alav, shekel hayashave. I lent you a Sela against something that was a shekel. A shekel is half of a Sela. So namely, the Malva says to the Lova, you owe me half a shekel. And v'hala Omar, the Lova says, Loki, that's not correct. El Sela hil visani, so if the Lova argues back to the Malva, you're not correct. I don't owe you anything. Since he's being kofir bakol, he is putter from making a shvua. That's case number one. Here's case number two. Same as before, where the Malva says that I lent you um, a sella's worth against a shekel's worth, so you owe me money. And Vahala Am Omer, the Lova says, no, Loki, El Asela Hilvi Sani Alav, I agree that you let me a Sela, but it was Shlosha Dinarim Hayashavit. It was three fourths of a Sela. So in that case, Chai, because you're Mode Bemiksa uh, Sataina, and you have to make a Shvua. That's what Chai means. And then for the second half of the Brisa, Sela Hilvi Sani Alav, Bez Havashavit, the Lova says, I borrowed two. Uh, I borrowed a sella, and it's now worth two sella. Hala Amar Loki, you're incorrect. El sella he'll be sichalav. Sella hayashav a potter. So then the malva would be potter from a shvur. And lastly, sella he'll be sunny alav. The lova says that I borrowed a sella, and shnayim hayashav, and now it's worth double. The Hala Amar Loki el sella be sichalav. Hey dinarim hayashav shav. It's not worth double. It's worth a different amount. So in that case, chayiv. And the last part of the brisa, we just learned four cases in a row. The last part of the brisa is the part that we are going to be analyzing. Me nishba. We have two cases where we said chayev. The first case was the uh, the first time. The, the second case of the brisa was where we see that one is chayev to make a shvua, as well as the uh, the third case, the second and third, no first and third. So in the first and third cases, you're going to be chayev. So says the Gemara. Me nishba. Who is the one who makes the payment? Says the Gemara, Misha Pikadon Etzlo, Shema Yishava Zev Yotzi Hala Sapikadon. It has to be that the person who was holding on to the Pikadon has to make the Shvua, um, a seemingly a Shvua She'eno Birshusa, because we're concerned that he just may pull out the item because he was the one who was watching it. So says the Gemara, Ahaya. Which of these four cases, which of the two cases of Chaya, where you're Chaya to make a Shvua in the Brisa of Rav Huna, which of the of those cases was this din talking about that it's mishapi kadon it's low? It says the Gemara ilema asefa. If it's going to be one of the latter cases where the lova said he'll be sunny, so says the Gemara, then v'tepokle deshua gabe malvehi deha kamodi miksasataina. It should be for other reasons, not because of Rav Huna. It should be because of modi miksasataina yishava. El Amar Shmuel is talking about the case of the Resha. Which case of the Resha? My Aresha says the Gemara Asefa the Resha. On the second case in the Brisa, where we said that the uh, that the Lova is going to be Chayev, it says the Gemara. What was the case? It's five six lines from the bottom. Sela hil bisicha alav. I lent you a Sela shekel hayashave against a hat, what is now valued at a half shekel. So he says, you owe me half shekel. Hala Amar Loki, that's not correct. This is a shua that the lova would make. 
So the Gemara has a very complex din that says that the rabbis teach us that the malve should make a shvua because we're concerned about the fact that the lobe would not have an item to show because he made a shvua. Now, v'im isa le Huna, turning to the top of Lamed Hay, and then I'll simplify before we close out. If in fact we do hold of Rav Huna, and Rashi reminds us what we're talking about with Rav Huna, im isa le Rav Huna shomer shehameshalim domim nishba sheinu birshuso, says the, says Rashi, amai chay shinan yotzi ha ishtaba. Why would we be concerned if in fact? In our brisa brought against Rav Huna, there was a shvush in Birshuso. Hechi matzi mapikla. How could it be? I should say kevan de mishtaba malvesh in Birshuso. Once the malve is making a shvua that the item is not in his rishus anymore, hechi matzi mapikla. Your concern is that the person is going to bring the item out from his uh, attic and say, Ah, the mashkon's right here. He already made. If he made Rav Huna's shvua, then you have nothing to worry about. Elamai, it must be that the brisa doesn't require to make the shvu of Rav Huna, and therefore it's a kasha and Rav Huna. So now I'm going to simplify this. I know the last 30, 25 lines are quite difficult and really require um, a lot of diligence. Um, uh, but let's just review. At the halfway point on Lamed Dalet, Lamed Aleph, on Lamed Dalet, Lamed Bez, Rav Huna said that even in our Mishnah, when the Shomer pays for the cost of the item that is no longer there, he pays the $20, he doesn't make a shua shomrim, but he does have to make a shua she'en abir shuso. The Gemara brings a long brisa and says, no, Rav Huna, your din of bringing a shua she'en abir shuso seems to not exist within this brisa. And if that's true, Rav Huna, then maybe you're wrong. Maybe there is no shua she'en abir shuso. We'll stop right here on the top line of Lamed Hay Amad Aleph, on the second uh, second line of Lamed Hay Amad Aleph. I will not be here tomorrow night or the next night. Mm-hmm. Mir Hashem, tomorrow at some point, I will post a recording, I hope, before the middle of the day. If not, then certainly before uh, Dafyomi uh, over here. Same for the next day. Wishing you all a beautiful night.